Apple versus HTC, bigger versus smaller, Android versus iOS. What this is, is a dogfight battle. I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com and it's part two of the head-to-head -head against the HTC One and Apple iPhone 5. And it starts right now. I start off part two of this dogfight battle between the HTC One and the iPhone 5 with a little bit of real talk for you. I'm showing you Passbook right here, and this is one of the applications I actually do like quite a bit in iOS, and it's included in iOS 7, obviously. But I think it needs some functionality improvements as well. For example, I'm showing you a ticket here that I had. I was in meetings in Omaha, Nebraska earlier in the week, and you can see my American ticket. Passbook is great because it brings those applications, those tickets, I should say, all into one application. So for example, I've got this, but then I can swipe over, for example, and see my Passbook, and I can download stuff like Walgreens and Delta, and Lufthansa and put my passes all in one easy spot. That said, it needs improvement. I have to manually take the tickets from my American application over here, using that as an example, from the application into the passbook. It should automatically do that and make it a little bit easier. That's kind of a frustration, but still, I think it's a great application. It just needs a little bit of work. It's a great idea by all stretches of the imagination though. Some things I love about the HTC One, I wanna highlight some features that make this thing unique because it's running Android 4.1 with HTC Sense version five. And it has a cool feature I call, actually I don't call it this, HTC calls it this, Blink Feed. I also call it Blink Feed, but that's the real product name. HTC Blink Feed is kind of a news aggregator, if you will, and it brings together the news, the Facebook, the tweets, all that stuff that's most important to you. And from this home screen here, and this is what it looks like out of the box, you can customize this with specific topics and services that you love, so maybe Associated Press or Chow.com using this as an example. You can come over here and find specific categories and more and customize this to what you want to see in your Blink feed. You can also add Twitter, Facebook, settings right here as you see, auto refresh, I can make it using Wi-Fi or more. I can go over to Topics and Services and see, hey, you know what, Facebook should be in there, LinkedIn should be in there, and then Twitter should be in there as well and I can hit home and it'll auto update and I can auto update as well by swiping down and it refreshes it right away. So got that feature, I think that's a pretty cool feature there and again, it comes out of the box. You can revert to the custom Android version if you want to, or not custom I should say, you can revert to the Sense 5 version, what you know from Sense in the past, just by going over here to the, the spare home screen and then adding home screens by clicking add panel right up there at the top. So widgets obviously pre-installed on this device and it's a combination of stock Google widgets and HTC widgets as well. So you've got a combination of both to use what you want on your individual home screens. Now you have a maximum of four home screens over here on the HTC One. The fifth one is taken up by Blink Feed. You can't remove Blink Feed, but you can turn it off or at least minimize it to an extent by making it update only on Wi-Fi and turning the home screen around where the home screen, for example, in my case, is one of the actual app areas or one of the real home screens that you may know from a traditional version of Android right over here. And then I've got some spare ones I can play around with as well. So customizable all the way around. You can do this with a lock screen stuff as well. Come in here, for example, to personalize, and we'll go down to wallpaper, lock screen style. I can change this from productivity to photo album to music, for example, or no lock screen, or just a regular wallpaper lock screen. And now when I turn it off and back on, my lock screen looks just like this and I can swipe up and I've got my four applications down here at the bottom. Now functionality wise, nothing really has changed in iOS 7 on the iPhone 5. You still got your four shortcuts down here, messages, mail, Safari, phone, and I can bring down other ones to replace. As you see right here, I can bring up mail, and settings, but that's about it over here. What has changed though, you'll notice the wallpaper, and this one's kind of hard to show off on camera, but as I move the phone, you'll see the wallpaper behind it moves. It's kind of a gyroscopic wallpaper where, for example, this water, if I wanted to see a specific piece of rock behind one of the applications, I can move it around, and the apps actually move, enabling me to see a little bit more underneath and around the application. So that's a really nice feature. So I can scroll down and immediately see my today area with my calendar, for example, my stocks and more, and then what's on my tap for tomorrow or on tap for tomorrow, I should say. I can go to all and see missed notifications as well, but then a new feature, I can scroll up from here and get some shortcuts to frequently use toggles, applications and more. So for example, airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb, and then screen lock are all here. I can adjust the brightness automatically. I can play music right here. I can turn on airdrop and airplay and then little cool features like this I can turn on a flashlight for example as you see reflecting off the HTC one I've got my calculator shortcut camera shortcut looks like a compass shortcut here as well no I'm sorry alarm shortcut right there and I can do all that by swiping up and you see this from the home screen as well when I turn it off and back on I can either swipe down or I can swipe up 
to access those, or I can go into camera, which is exactly what we're gonna do on both of these devices right now. Eight megapixel camera on the Apple iPhone 5, four ultra pixel camera on the HTC One with a cool feature called HTC Zoe. So I'll bring over the Galaxy S4 because it's what happened to be nearby, and I'll take a picture with HTC Zoe. Now this has all the typical HTC stuff that you remember from HTC devices in the past. I can take burst pictures as you see I'm lighting up right over there. Bunch of different pictures, I can save those and pick my favorite out of the 20. So I can do that one for example, and I can say that's the best shot. You know what, we'll delete the rest of the burst pictures. And I can turn on video camera also. I can turn on something called HTC Zoe, which is really nice here. And what it does, it records a three second snippet of the video, or a three second snippet, as you can see, and it fills up in the red with the camera. So I have a three second video on my phone. Of the video, or a three second snippet, as you can and so I have this three second snippet, and what that comes into play with is something in the gallery, and I'll show it to you right now. So let's say you're at a wedding, you're you know, at an event with a friend, and you take concert maybe. You take 200 pictures, a combination of Zoe's. There's this cool feature where I can go into my photos and go to events, take a look at all the stuff taken that I've done today, and I can click right here, and it automatically creates this cool video for me that combines my pictures and my Zoe's together. I can change the music, which in effect also changes the presentation style. This is all on the device with no editing whatsoever. So you can see when you have 200 pictures or you know, a combination of 100 Zoe's and 100 pictures, it can be really animated and really cool. And from there, you can send this to friends. Now, obviously that one's not too animated because there's only three pictures, or excuse me, two pictures and one Zoe. But when you do get a bunch in there, it gets pretty animated all around and it's fun to play with. And over on the iPhone 5, you've got video, photo, square, and pano, as you see right here. I can move back and forth between square, photo, and I have built-in filters on the iOS, or in iOS 7 on the iPhone 5, I should say. By clicking right here, I can see things like Chrome, Instant, Transfer, None, Mono, Fade, and I can click those and see, you know what, Transfer, for example. I like kind of the autumn or the amber look here. And I'll go ahead and click right here, take that picture and see how it looks on the screen. And I've got video as well, easily swipe back and forth. And likewise, I can come over here and hit none and go right back to a standard picture. I can flip to front facing camera and flip back and easily snap shots on the fly with this. So we'll take a look here, boom, and take a look at what it looks like with that effect, that filter and you can see the color changes as a result of the filter. Now, there's some new improvements in the photo structure as well. You're gonna see a bunch of pictures that I've taken right here, and it shows categorized by North Dallas, for example. These are all up near my office, Dallas and Alexis Drive, and it categorizes them by dates. It's called Moments in iOS 7, and it's coming very soon, obviously, to the iPhone 5, the 4S, and the 4, and it's a really nice feature that categorizes them very much like Android devices have in the past. So over here, you can categorize by events, by albums, by locations, and more. So nice to see that coming to the iPhone 5 and iOS 7. And likewise, I can see all my different pictures here on the fly by years, 2013. I can press and hold, should be able to press and hold on the screen and move back and forth between those pictures. There we go. You just saw it. Let's see if I can get it to work again. There we go, see, and I can move back and forth between those pictures. So you get that feature and that ability in iOS 7 and a completely revitalized design. So it just depends on what's most functional to you. Last but not least, I wanna show you this. It's quadrant standard over here on the HTC One. And while this is running, I'll talk a little bit more about the iPhone 5. Obviously very pocketable for a lot of people, which is really a nice functionality on this device. And then I can scroll over here and see FaceTime still intact over on the iPhone 5, so stuff you know and love. One new additional feature to iOS 7 is iTunes Radio, which you can see right here. I've got featured stations. I can add a station if I want to and say, you know what, new station, we're gonna pop it up. It's loading, and it'll give me the option to choose the music that matters most to me. So loading up right now, and I can click done up at the top right-hand corner when I'm done, and my Wi-Fi may be a little bit slow right now, which is why it's probably acting up and being a little bit wonky. But 80s Dance Party, for example, pop hits, artist on tour, and of course it integrates right in with your existing music application on the iPhone, so you can move from it to your existing songs, your existing playlists, and more. Over here, Quadrant Standard on the HTC One, rocking it out at a pretty uh, slow network speed, but still should be a fast quadrant standard speed all around. So size-wise, a little bit different with these devices as well. You can see four inch display, both in the size department of the display, and then of the overall unit itself, much, much smaller. I'll inch these up so you can see both. Much, much smaller than the HTC One, but don't get me wrong, both are still very pocketable 
and easy to use. 2,300 milliamp hour battery over here, 1,440 over on the iPhone 5. Truth be told, call time is about the same on both of these devices. They're some of the better ones on the market. I get about a day of use on both of these devices. So for the most part, I've been pretty pleased with overall performance. I get about a day, I'd say maybe one and one fourths of a day out of both of these devices. And there you have it, 12,598. Apparently second time is the charm because I ran the test again off camera and it worked just fine after a few seconds of saying processing results. So again, like anything else in this mobile industry, it really depends on what you're using your device for in order for me to make a good recommendation as to what's best for you. If you're a media person, this is still a very compelling alternative, particularly with iTunes radio, but then with the existing stuff, the music integration with iTunes, the ability to buy something on iTunes in your computer and have it auto sync, it's got a great ecosystem that continues to be award winning in many ways. So the iPhone 5 is a great contender. Where the HTC One does a great job, it's got a quad core processor, new innovations like Blink Feed and HTC Zoe are fantastic. The camera is a great option on this device, a great ability. Uh, it performs great, I should say. I'm having trouble talking today. It performs really well on the HTC One, really impressed with it all around. The battery life's decent, and it's encased in a beautiful metal shell with a 4.7 inch display. So for those of you that think the iPhone 5's display is a little bit too small, this could be a good option. Now, based on features and all around availability and what it has to offer, the winner of the dogfight is the HTC One. It's got a great camera, like I said, Blink Feed Zoe, quad core processor, price point is great, 32 gigabytes of storage at the 199 price point. All around, it's a great option, and the black one, is really, really good looking. Keep it locked on phonedog.com for continuing coverage. I'm on Twitter at phonedog underscore Aaron, and I would love to hear what you have to say about both of these devices. If you think the iPhone 5 is great, if you think the one's great, if you think the five sucks, and you think the one's poopy or stinky, you let me know on Twitter at phonedog underscore Aaron, and you don't even have to use those words. You can get as crazy as you want to on Twitter. I'm on Facebook as well at facebook.com slash hi Aaron Baker, and on Google Plus at gplus.to slash phonedog. Thanks for watching. Keep it locked on the site for more on both of these devices, including iOS 7 and the iPhone 5 up against other devices on the market. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next time.